guys, this is Oksana, your host of Easy Exposure, the tutorials about photography. This is lesson 4. In this lesson, we will summarize everything what we were talking about in lesson 1, 2 and 3. If you didn't see those lessons yet, I would highly recommend you to do so. So, in this lesson, we will talk about exposure. As I already mentioned in lesson 1, uh, exposure is the amount of light which gets into the camera and projects onto recording media or sensor. Uh, the exposure depends on three things, which are aperture, which is opening inside the lens through which light goes into the camera, shutter speed, which is amount of time, how long the shutter inside the camera remains open, so the light travels through the aperture, through the opening, while the shutter is open and the light projects onto the film in the film camera or onto the sensor and actually the film or sensor sensitivity is ISO this also influence how much light will be projected so in this lesson we will summarize all those three things and see how they work with each other and how to set the good aperture, shutter speed and ISO to get a picture in the different situations. So let's get started. Please take a look on the screen where I combined full stops of aperture, full stops of shutter speed and full stops of ISO. Let's take a look at aperture first. As you can see, the smaller the F number, the bigger the aperture opening and the more light gets into the camera. For shutter speed, the smaller the number displayed in your camera, the slower the shutter speed is and the more light gets into the camera. And for ISO, actually the bigger the ISO number, the more sensitive to light sensor is it means it brings more light into the camera or on the sensor the rule that previous full stop lets twice as much light into the camera as the next one applies for three of them for aperture shutter speed and iso that's why one stop of aperture equals one stop of shutter speed and equals one stop of iso but how we actually know which aperture, shutter speed or ISO to use? Look at this picture. Every camera has a built-in light meter and it meters the intensity of light which gets into the camera which is reflected from the subject you are taking picture of. There is a different method of metering and we will talk about that in a separate lesson about metering. But in this lesson, let's just talk about that in general. If you look through your viewfinder in the camera, you will see the light metering indicator. You will see a zero in the middle, plus from your left and minus from your right. Your goal is to get this indicator as close to the zero as possible. If your meter leans towards the minus, it means that there is not enough light. You will have to three options to let more light. Either you will have to open aperture, slow down your shutter speed, or set the higher ISO. If your meter leaning towards the plus, you will have to eliminate light. There is too much light. And you will also have three options to do that. You will have to either close down your aperture, make your shutter speed faster, or set the smaller ISO if it's possible, if it's not already the smallest one. Let's pretend that at 200 ISO, your meter tells you to use F11 as an aperture and one. 1 25th of the second as a shutter speed. But let's try to open our aperture opening one stop. So we use F8 instead of F11. 
as you can see the image got brighter. Since we opened our aperture one stop, we doubled the amount of light which gets into the camera. Let's close down our aperture back to f11 and this time try to change shutter speed. Let's make our shutter speed slower and use shutter speed of 1 60th of the second instead of 1 25th of the second. Our image got brighter since we kept our shutter open longer. And this way double the amount of light which gets into the camera. Let's put our shutter speed back where it was to 1 25th of the second and this time to try to change ISO. Let's use ISO 400 instead of 200. ISO 400 is twice as sensitive as ISO 200. That's why we also doubled our amount of light and that's why the image also got brighter. Let's put our ISO back to 200 again. Let's try to move opposite direction this time and close our aperture opening down to f16 instead of f11. By closing our aperture opening one stop, we cut our amount of light in a half. That's why the image got darker. Let's put our aperture back and change our shutter speed to 1 250th of the second. Since this shutter speed is twice as fast, it cuts our amount of light in half again and image gets darker. Let's put the shutter speed back and change ISO this time. When we change our ISO from 200 to 100, it cuts the sensor sensitivity in half. That's why our image got darker again. As you can see, it doesn't really matter if you change aperture, shutter speed or ISO. We get the same results in terms of light which gets into the camera because one stop of aperture is equals one stop of shutter speed and it's equals one stop of ISO. Let's put our ISO back where it was to 200 and change our aperture again to f8. As you can see our image is too light. But let's pretend that for some reason we would like to use f8 as an aperture. To bring our image to normal exposure, we have two options. We can change either shutter speed or ISO. Let's try it out. We will have to either change our shutter speed to 1 to 150th of the second or change our ISO to 100. Let's put everything to where it was. Let's pretend for some reason you need to use much faster shutter speed and instead of 1 1 25th of the second you would like to use 1 500th of the second. In this case you will have to change your shutter speed instead of one stop you will have to change it two stops. Let's see how the image changes when you do that. Of course, the image got much darker. Let's see how you can balance it out. In this case, you have three options. You can either open your aperture two stops. One, two, you will end up at f5.6. The second option, you can change your ISO two stops. One, two, you will end up at 800 ISO. Your third option is to change both, but you change an aperture only one stop and then you change ISO only one stop. But in general I wouldn't touch ISO too often. As you maybe remember from my lesson 3 about ISO, the bigger the ISO number the worse your image quality you get and more grain in your image you get. So I would recommend you to set your ISO to the lowest possible in your camera. For some cameras it's 100, for some cameras it's 200. And then I would play with aperture and shutter speed only. 
I would use the higher ISO only when it's really needed. In most cases you will use higher ISO when you don't have enough light and you're not allowed to use flash for some reason or you don't want to use flash. Let's take a look at this image. It was taken in the theater so there was not a lot of available light and also I wasn't allowed to use flash because it was a disturbing to performers. At ISO 100 my meter readings for aperture and shutter speed were showing f5.6 and 1 15th of the second. 1 15th of the second is pretty slow shutter speed. If I would actually use the shutter speed for the shot I would definitely get camera shake and blur from the movement of the subject because actors were moving on the stage. That's why to freeze the movement and avoid camera shake, in this situation I use shutter speed of 1 25th of the second. Let's see what happens if we change our shutter speed from 1 15th of the second to 1 25th of the second. Let's see how many stops do we need to change. One stop, two stops and three stops. There is three stops between 1 15th of the second and 1 25th of the second. As you can see, when I made my shutter speeds faster, less light got into the camera. That's why image got darker. Let's see how we can fix this problem. Remember in my lesson 1, where I was talking about aperture? I showed you different lenses and I showed you that not every lens has the same range of aperture. In this shot I used my 18 to 200 mm zoom kit lens. The one I got was my camera. This lens is probably not the best lens you could use in low light conditions. The reason for that is that uh, it doesn't have a really wide option for the aperture opening. The aperture opening for 18 millimeters, if you don't zoom it, will be f3.5 and when you need to zoom your lens to focal lengths of 200 millimeters, your biggest aperture opening is only f5.6. In this situation I was far from the stage and I need to use zoom to get a closer shot of the actor. So my widest aperture opening was at 5.6. If I would use a better lens which opens the aperture wider, those lenses by the way called faster lenses because with those lenses you can use faster shutter speed. I would move my aperture to the left three stops. One, two, three. But in this case my lens doesn't, doesn't allow me to move my aperture, open my aperture. Not even to f4. So all I get was f5.6. That's why in this situation higher ISO got handy. Because I changed my shutter speed three stops from the meter reading, I have to change my ISO three stops as well. One, two, and three stops. So I shot this image with ISO 800. I hope those examples helped you to understand the relationship between aperture shutter speed and ISO in terms of amount of light they let into the camera. And remember that if you remove uh, some light with one of them, let's say you will have to close up your aperture, you can always add some light with the other one. Let's say you, when you close up your aperture, you can always add some light with making your shutter speed slower and your shutter will remain open longer, that's more light. Or you can make your uh, sensor more sensitive by hiring your ISO number. But the amount of light is not the only thing which is influenced by aperture, shutter speed and ISO. And we will talk in part 2 about other things which 
are influenced by average shower speed and ISO. So stay tuned and watch part two.